Welcome back. All right, so we're going to talk about Pat Burns today. So I want to talk about a coach today, um, and, and this is the second coach that I will have profiled. Uh, Pat Burns is, to me, I think is the obvious choice for the next coach for me to talk about because he's one of the most talked about coaches in Canadian history. Um, and, I, and I say that because I don't know how many people south of the border know Burns as well as we know him north of the border, unless you're a Devils fan or a Bruins fan. If you're a Devils fan, he may be beloved for you. Uh, because he was the coach of their last Stanley Cup champion. Uh, Pat Burns started off as a police officer in Gatineau. Uh, he was he was an imposing figure. He he looked like a cop. He just he did he did he had the the dark hair the mustache. He was a he was a big man, and uh, you know you, you didn't want to mess with him. And and there were times that his temper would come out. And I was like, yeah, I don't I don't think if he snaps, I don't think any of his players are going to be able to completely hold him back. We would then see that in action uh, when he was a coach of the Toronto Maple Leafs. But in Montreal, that's where he starts. What a way to start, right? Uh, you start off as the coach of the Montreal Canadiens. No pressure. Montreal at this time just expected a cup every single year. Uh, anything less than a Stanley Cup in Montreal was considered kind of sort of a failure at that point. And the 88-89 Montreal Canadiens didn't want to be failures. Uh, it was an 80-game season in the NHL at this point. 53-18-9 was the record for Montreal that first year. 115 points, just a couple shy of the Calgary Flames, who they would meet in the Stanley Cup Final in a matchup between teams 1 and 2 in the NHL. Uh, one of the few times that's happened, but it's great, right? It's great when you know that the best two teams are meeting each other in the final. And, of course, uh, we also had the added bonus of being two Canadian teams against each other. That would be the last time that happened. Uh, two teams, two Canadian teams against each other in the final. Uh, in 21 games in the playoffs, they went 14 and seven. They would lose at, and on home ice against Calgary in Game Six. First time that had happened, where a team had won uh, in the Forum, won that Stanley Cup. Uh, but in the Stanley Cup final appearance and all that, Burns also ends up becoming the Jack Adams winner. So this is again the storyline of a new coach coming to a new team. And having unexpected success ends up winning the Jack Adams. This is normally who wins the Jack Adams, which is really punctuated throughout his time as a coach in the NHL. 89 90 Montreal in that 80 game schedule ends up 41 28 and 11, 93 points. Uh, in the playoffs, a 5 and 6 record in 11 games. So they're out in the second round. Uh, 90 91, 80 games again, 39 30 and 11 record, 89 points. In the playoffs, a 7 and 6 record in 13 games. 91-92 would be his final year in Montreal. Uh, 80 games, 41-18 and or 41-28 and 11 record, 93 points in the playoffs. The team goes four and seven and 11 games. He resigns, so he steps down. Now, what's interesting is 92-93 is the Stanley Cup winning season for Montreal, their last Stanley Cup. So he leaves a year before Montreal wins the Stanley Cup, and then we can have the discussion of. Would he have led them to the Stanley Cup in 93 if he'd still been the coach there? I like to think he would have. So he chose the Leafs over L.A. I want you to think about this for a second. He could go to L.A. and coach Gretzky, who he knew, right? And and that would have been a great story. And, and 93, of course, the Kings go all the way to the Stanley Cup final at the expense of the Toronto Maple Leafs, who he chose. So he goes from one pressure cooker to another. And you can have the debate over which pressure cooker is worse, Montreal or Toronto, which, which medias, which fan base... Which, you know, who's more demanding? I, I think you can make an argument for either. But the 92-93 Leafs uh, shed that 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 aura of, of just the, the losing that had been their staple throughout the 80s. Uh, 84 games, 44 and 29 and 11, 99 points. That is a record for Toronto to that stage. Uh, 100 points eluded them for the longest time in their history. But 99 points isn't bad. Keep in mind there were no three-point games at this time. Uh, in the playoffs, they go 11 and 10. They go all the way to the conference final. They would lose against the LA Kings in an epic battle that yeah, Toronto fans still don't like talking about. Uh, he won the Jack Adams that year, though. So again, takes takes over a new team. Toronto performed much better than I think people expected, and he wins the Jack Adams. But game one against LA got kind of hot under the collar. So McSorley drops Dougie Gilmore with an elbow that uh, looked premeditated to Pat Burns. And he decided he was going to take things into his own hands. Um, he decides he's going to go after Barry Melrose. And he was charging to go over to their bench. And I, I don't know what would have happened if he'd gotten over there, but I think it's similar to if, if Tortorella had been able to, to confront Hartley. Remember Vancouver and Calgary? At any rate, 
Um, that was a very entertaining series, very entertaining playoffs, and just it showed Burns is willing to to fight for his team. So year two in, in Toronto, very similar record of 43, 29, and 12. They end up with 98 points that year. They go to the conference finals again. He doesn't charge at the other bench, though. Uh, they end up 9-9 nine and nine in the playoffs. Uh, they end up out against Vancouver in the conference finals. Uh, I d I'm glad he didn't charge at the other bench because it was Pat Quinn behind the other bench. I'd rather not have seen Pat Quinn in a fight with Pat Burns. Uh, there are people who would like to see that. I'd, I'd rather not. But Burns was fantastic, and he got Toronto to these these fantastic records in 92, 93, and 93, 94. 94, 95, they drop off a bit. It's a 48-game season, uh, so the lockout shortened that year. They end up 21, 19, and 8 for 50 points. They lost in the first round in seven games. Uh, Toronto fell off quickly in the mid-90s. Uh, 65 games he coached. They ended up 25, 30, and 10 under his leadership for 60 points. And they relieved him of his duties, which at the time I completely and totally disagreed with. So he doesn't coach in the NHL for the 96-97 season, but for 97-98, he chooses a much more quiet location like Boston. So he goes from Montreal to Toronto to Boston. And of course, the expectations in Boston, not quite where they were in Montreal, but still a pretty demanding and pretty, pretty, pretty passionate fan base and, and media. Uh, so it's an 82-game season. The NHL's moved to 82-game seasons, where they've remained until now. 39-30-13 uh, and 13 record for 91 points. Boston wasn't expected to be much of anything that year. In the playoffs, they lost in six games in the first round because they really didn't belong in the playoffs. They got there because Pat Burns. So he wins the Jack Adams again. So his first year in Montreal, Jack Adams. His first year in Toronto, Jack Adams. His first year in Boston, same thing. He's coach of the year. Uh, the following season, they had the exact same record. 39, 30, and 13. It was actually, it's weird. The first season, it was like, oh, cool. This is, you know, they're, they're doing better than they should have. But that second season, it felt like that was a bit of a disappointment. But in the playoffs, they get out of the first round. They ended up 6-6 six and six in 12 games in the playoffs. So things are going better in Boston than they should. The management in Boston is, it's uh, it's not good. Uh, so 99-2000, that really starts to show. Uh, the record for, for Boston was 24, 33, 19, and 6. That fourth column being overtime losses for 73 points. So for Burns, I, I still don't think this reflected on him, but they got rid of him early in the 2000-2001 season. Eight games, 3-4-1 and one was the record for seven points. So Burns is out of a job. Doesn't coach the rest of 2000-2001. Also does not coach for 2001-2002 but he gets named the coach of uh, the New Jersey Devils. Now, Lou Lamorello was not shy about switching coaches. He did it a lot. Uh, three Stanley Cups in less than a decade, three different coaches for those Stanley Cups. He had Jacques Lemaire, he had Larry Robinson, and then Pat Burns. Burns finally gets that cup ring. So 82 games again for uh, New Jersey, 46-20, and 6 record, and 108 points. So really good regular season for New Jersey. And then in the playoffs, the Stanley Cup, they get the, the, the prerequisite 16 wins to go with eight losses in 24 games. And he gets that Stanley Cup. And it's a great moment for Pat Burns and for the New Jersey Devils, right? Again, their last Stanley Cup with Pat Burns. 2003-2004, uh, good season. Uh, New Jersey finishes with a record of 43-25-12-2. Uh, 100 points. And that would be the last year that you'd need four columns for the record. But 100 points overall, they lost in the first round in five games. Uh, then you lose the 0405 season. And in the 2005 year, uh, he had to retire. Uh, cancer uh, was, was the diagnosis, and therefore he had to uh, take the time to deal with that. And he retired from the game that he loved so much. Uh, so he didn't have a chance to continue behind the Devil's, Devil's Bench into 0506. He would pass away in 2010 after his third bout with cancer. Uh, it was reoccurring, and he, you know, he fought as and as as only Pat Burns can. Uh, now during this time, we know he's dealing with a lot of health problems that have made him retire. Uh, Don Cherry was very vocal, and others were as well about how you need to put him in the Hall of Fame. He needs to be in the Hall of Fame. Um, and we don't know how much longer he's going to be around, so get him into the Hall of Fame. Um, he passed away in 2010. They inducted him into the Hall of Fame in 2014. It is it is criminal that it was clear that, that fans wanted to see it. A lot of NHLers wanted to see him in the Hall of Fame. And for whatever reason, the selection committee 
didn't put him in the Hall of Fame until 2014. And so that's that's one sticking point that uh, it's always bothered me, and, and it, it still does that uh, he belonged in the hall. He had 501 victories and 1,019 games behind the bench, which is excellent. 353 regulation losses, 151 ties, 14 overtime or shootout losses, 1,167 points, and in the playoffs, a record of 78 and 71 in 149 games. No reason not to put him in the Hall of Fame as soon as you can, but they didn't. They waited until 2014. So it, it is it is a sticking point with me. But let me know your thoughts, how you felt about Pat Burns. Uh, one of the more entertaining, I think one of the best coaches I've seen. And sadly, uh, four years was the max. And then he was out. And it was the weirdest thing how, yep, four years in Montreal and he steps down. Four years in Toronto, they fired him during the fourth year. Fourth year in Boston, they fired him. It's not his fault the team wasn't good enough. But hey, here we are. Let me know your thoughts. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through you just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.